Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. Hi everybody, Chris Perillo here, and this is your Geek Out for Tuesday, June 26, 2012. Once again, we're brought to you by GoToAssist from Citrix, and you know that working in IT can be crazy and unpredictable, unless you have GoToAssist. It'll help you stay on top of it all. GoToAssist world-class remote support allows you to solve your users' problems quickly from anywhere. And for a free 30-day trial, visit GoToAssist.com, click the Try It Free button, and use the promo code Perillo. Dude, is that crazy? Which one is me? You, you, you can tell which one, right? I use the uh, Face Craze app to uh, transplant my face to somebody else's head. And we've got a link to where you can download the Face Craze app in the description below. Too much fun. Oh, but you're watching Geek Out for functionality. Fine, let me tell you that we're going to be streaming live tomorrow morning around 9.30 a.m. Pacific. That's when Google I.O. is also live. We've got the link for where you can watch our live discussion of what's going on with Google's announcements because we've done it for Apple's announcements, we've done it for Microsoft's announcements, and we expect some pretty big announcements from Google tomorrow, so won't you join us for discussion? Should your IT department embrace the bring-your-own-device era? I think the days of being assigned a laptop or a device are, I guess, moving quickly past us. I mean, how does it feel to walk into a workplace only to have your device ripped out of your hands and then you're handed something from, like, 1974? Or that's what it feels like? I mean, who works anywhere where you have the latest and greatest technology? Usually it's like a decade behind the times, right? I mean, isn't it much easier for you to work and get your job done when you're using products that you know and you love and you appreciate? And granted, not every workplace could operate in that capacity, but wouldn't it make the job a bit easier for you if you used your own devices? Wouldn't you want that from your IT department? Who wouldn't? Who wants to use somebody else's devices, especially if they're not as great as the devices that you use at home? Three free ways to clone Windows XP in 2012. A follow-up. Yes, people still use Windows XP and there's nothing wrong with that. My dad is one of those folks who refuses to let go of XP, even though I've shown him Ubuntu, I've shown him OS 10, I've shown him Windows 7 and Windows 8, and he's still going, no, XP is good enough for me. And uh, I know there are plenty of people who believe that as well. So if you want to know more about how to clone Windows XP, we've got uh, some suggestions for you. How to install Android on a Nook e-reader, whether it's the color or the tablet, uh, there's an easy way of doing it. Just use removable media. And uh, the nice thing is you don't need to know anything about Android. All you have to have is a Nook. And uh, they ship you this little card that you can insert. And suddenly you've got Android on the tablet without violating your warranty. And I think that's a big deal. And the nice thing about the Nook is it's very, very, very affordable. And if you wanted to give Android a shot, uh, I would say that as far as the hardware is concerned, after using both, uh, the Nook is definitely better than the Kindle. How to use Dropbox to host and stream videos. Many of you didn't realize it, but we use Dropbox pretty much every day with LockerGnome. I upload my vlog to Dropbox so it can be backed up off-site, and I also share the vlog ahead of time to all the registered Nomies. It's kind of like a, an extra perk or a bonus for them, uh, but we use it all the time. It's easy for you to do, too, and the nice thing is you can just upload a folder and just share the link with people and you don't have to worry about anything, right? No more email attachments, just use Dropbox. 10 things to think about when writing articles. One, tell a story. We've talked about that before. Two, is there such a thing as being too eloquent? You don't wanna be loquacious, do you? That's the word of the day. Make things easy for your readers to follow. Present opinion as fact. You don't really wanna do that. Even though it's uh, easy, to claim that something is the best ever. Remember that best is relative. Opinion, fact. Being too serious? Being too frivolous? Do you have a deadline? A minimum word count? Do you have an editor? Does it all make sense? I mean, before I publish anything online, I usually pass it on to someone. I'm like, could you give this a read? Do I make sense? And after doing it, even reading the article aloud to myself, it makes for a better article and nobody seems to disagree. Should you use 4G over a wired broadband connection? Well, 
you know, if you're all about getting rid of the wire, a good 4G connection, I mean, a truer 4G connection, not just the marketing term 4G that you might find on your iPhone currently, uh, it may be a good option and you might be able to save some money and you won't have to worry about the uh, wires. So would you go 4G over a wired connection? Higher resolution Kindle Fires may be coming at the end of July. That might be news if you skipped the Kindle Fire current generation. I'm actually considering selling my Kindle Fire. I bought it new, $200. I don't know how much they're going for, probably $5. I don't know. I haven't even looked to see how much money I can get from it. Anybody want to buy a slightly used Kindle Fire from me? I'll autograph it. I won't autograph it if you don't want me to. Beta launching Walla.Buy, or Wallaby if you read it straight, uh, simply maximizes cash back rebates, merchant discounts, and frequent traveler rewards for all of your credit cards. Hmm, maybe a good way of earning bonus points. That's one of the reasons I use a certain credit card over other credit cards, because I accrue points that I can use on Amazon, which I use all the time. Well, not just the credit card, but Amazon. The TSA's dumb air security rules are not based on science. <laughs> Shock. Sidecar app brings hitchhiking into the 21st century with background checks. Okay, so think of that like an Airbnb for driving? Suppose it'd be a nice way of saving money and carpooling cross-country. I think the background check thing is crucial, though. And if you didn't catch the news, Apple has released an official podcast app for iOS, a separate app. If you go to the app store and the, look for the podcast app, uh, you'll be able to download it. And then you can search for me, Chris Perillo, or just my last name, Perillo, and subscribe to the Geek Out podcast. These very videos can be delivered to your iOS devices. It's a universal binary, so it'll work natively on the iPad as well as iPhone and iPod Touch. Plus, and this may be an extra bit of good news, we're also bringing our Perillo vlogs to a podcast. So you could stay tuned and search for that, uh, well, almost immediately. Cube asks on LockerGnome.net, is Apple security better than Windows? Actually, it's probably worse. Yeah, Apple's floated along long enough, security through obscurity, but with more people using OS X, uh, you know, they have to keep in mind that uh, there are going to be many attack vectors. In fact, I would go as far as to say there are more exploits that are operating system neutral anymore, as in phishing attempts through email or social networks, that's what you have to keep in mind. It doesn't matter if you're using OS X, uh, Ubuntu, or any distribution of Linux or Windows. You can still be exploited. Uh, and I think the key factor there for staying safe is just download stuff through the App Store. Uh, whether it's Apple's App Store, Microsoft's forthcoming App Store, you can even download through Ubuntu Software Center or whatever they're calling it these days. Uh, just go through official channels and you can keep yourself uh, safe. Keep yourself safe. That's what I was trying to say. LockerGnome.net user Mutley2209 asks, what's the next step in laptop cooling systems? I would say that uh, more efficient processors are, are probably the next step. I, and I realize it's not addressing the question directly, but if you think about it, technology is getting smaller, faster, and it should also be getting cooler and way more efficient. YouTube users DVI369 asks, hey, Chris and Diana, what's the square footage of your house? I'm looking at a property in the Seattle area, and that's a random fact I'd like to know. Uh, how much is it, on? I think it's like some 700, 800 square feet-ish at general range. Uh, and in the Seattle area, it's approximately a billion dollars. It's kind of expensive to live in Seattle. I love the area. I, I love it. I, I, I can't even think of living anywhere else. But, um, you know, ultimately, it's not about the square footage of your house. It's what you do with it. At LockerGnome.net, Classentech underscore Crafter asks, what's your favorite Google Chrome theme? I'm a fan of default, period. Everything else I see is like, ah, I don't like, ah, especially if I'm using a web browser. Everything I've seen has been ugly. I I'm not saying if you created a theme that isn't fugly, cool, but I haven't found it yet. I'll just stick with the default. We hope you join us for tomorrow's live discussion of the Google I.O. event. Again, the link for that live video is already in this video's description. We'll see you later. If you go to the... Hey, hey.